Global Brit Asia podcast with Sunny and Shay. Today's special on health and well-being. We're going to be focusing on stroke and actually all of the areas that you need to be aware of if it's affected you personally or a loved one. And today to tell us more about this, we are joined by Dr. Shriman Andol. He is a stroke consultant at King's College London and also executive medical director at Manx Care. Dr. Andol, thank you for joining us today. Um, the key aspect that a lot of people get confused by is what is an actual stroke. Can you please break that down for us, please, and give us an understanding of what is a stroke? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. And I've done, I've been here on the show before, and I will say this again, because the Public Health England has been running campaign about stroke for more than 10 years now. So I think um, it's quite important to revisit this, uh, revisit this again. And I'll tell you the reasons as we go along in the interview. But a stroke is a condition which affects the brain because there is a damage to the brain because of lack of blood supply or obstruction to the blood supply, either because of a clot or a burst of a blood vessel, which is a bleed. So that is a stroke. And depending on what part of the brain gets affected, you get that symptoms. And what, uh, what are the causes of a stroke? What causes this to happen to the body? Right. OK, I think uh, that that's a kind of complex thing because there are several things that can cause you to have a stroke. And the commonest things are the risk factors which most of the public know about, which is high blood pressure, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, which is, you know, uh, abnormal uh, fat that has been very high in the body, smoking and other risk factors that run in the families are other causes of stroke. So on top of this, there are other causes as well which are quite more distinct and different, but these are the majority of the causes that cause somebody to have a stroke. With that in mind, Dr. Andol, um, it's fair to say that the South Asian community is affected by the stroke. They, you know, the individuals within this community are at higher risk, aren't they? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I mean, say it is like um, the South Asian committee, as well as the Black African committee, we are in, in both sides, they are actually affected uh, bad because not only they are bad at at recognizing the stroke, but also they are at risk of having these risk factors we talked about more prevalent than the white people, which means that you will not only have stroke, which is twice likely to happen, but also you will have struggle recognizing them as well. So the bad bad in both counts. Uh, so how can we identify someone who's having a stroke? Mm or signs of had a stroke? Right, well, that's two different things, isn't it? Yes. Somebody who's having a stroke is what the, the Public Health England, the PHE has been running a campaign, which is the Act Fast campaign. Yes. Which, which, uh, which I'll quickly go through. F for face, which is there is a no droop of face on one side. A for arms, you can't raise, the, raise both arms, but you can't keep it there. And and S, um, fast S for speech when the speech becomes a bit garbled or slurred, and T when it's time to act or time to call nine nine nine. Even if you see one of these symptoms, you need to call the nine nine nine. So the key issue is about getting a stroke is an emergency. It's a medical emergency and calling an ambulance. Now you asked about how do we know somebody's already had a stroke. Yes. Well, those it, that is a bit more complex. Apart from what symptoms I've just said to you, there are other parts. And right at the introduction, I said that where which part of the brain gets affected, your symptoms are related to that. So it is not limited to the symptoms what I've just said. It could be part. It could be problems with the vision. It could be the numbness, and it could be you know weakness of one leg or not the entire half of the body. But it could be that. It could be dizziness. And it could be lots more, depending on which part of the brain gets affected. If you have concerns that you might have had a stroke, can we go to the doctor, the GP, with some of the concerns you said, oh, I'm feeling a bit rough on my left leg, or I'm finding that I can't taste anything. Will those be enough for a doctor to, uh, you know, diagnose a stroke? Or does it have to be further tests that need to be uh, sent forward to, I guess, a specialist like yourself? Yeah, I, and so good question. I mean, so the first thing I was going to say was, uh, I did say that stroke is a medical emergency. And if I'd actually draw the same parallel, and if I said that somebody's got a chest pain, what would you do? Would you actually go to a, call an ambulance and go to a hospital? Or would you actually say, um, mm, let me go back to the GP later on? No, what you would do is call an ambulance and go to the hospital. And the same way, you got to treat the stroke. Stroke, by the way, 
um, just to remind ourselves, it is one single biggest cause, or rather the fourth, if you take it on its own, as a cause of, of mortality in the Western world. And so a lot of people, more than 35,000 35, deaths happen every year in stroke in UK alone. So it is a it is a significant cause of mortality. Never mind that, and more than hundred thousand strokes happen in a year in UK. So it is quite important that um, there are significant number of people having minimal major symptoms. So as soon as you think you suspect it is a stroke, there isn't really a time to actually call up check out with the GP the following day or anything. I think that the next step is to call up 999, get on to, get into ambulance, go to head into E&E and get it sorted out there. Can you also, Dr. Indol, uh, give us the, the right website? Because as you've mentioned, there is a big campaign to raise awareness regarding stroke and fast is what you should be doing, acting as fast as you possibly can and not hesitating to call 999. If anyone wants further details, should they be going to the NHS website for this? You know, you're absolutely right. I don't think, you know, there is lots of, uh, lots of charity websites along with NHS. They all work together collaboratively and there's lots of partnership working. All you need to do is the stroke.org and then you can go into the Stroke Association website and it will take you to different links into the website to deal with whatever help you may have. The help, oops, the help that will take you from take you from actually who you need to seek, who you need to get from social services to clinical help, to medications, to pharmacists, and to other things that once you have had a stroke, it will also take you to people who can help you to get your life back, recovery itself. Thank you, Dr. Indol. And as Dr. Indol has mentioned, if you um, yourself have been a victim of stroke, perhaps you've suffered from a stroke or you have a loved one and you want more details on how you can get help on the recovery and life after a stroke, or perhaps you need information on what it actually means and what needs to happen when you are suffering a stroke, go to the website stroke.org.uk. That's S-T-R-O-K-E dot org dot uk all of the information is there and there are actually links to help you get in touch with any other organization that can help you as well we'll be back straight after the break This is British Asia podcast with Sunny and Shay. We are talking about health and well-being, and today our subject is strokes. And we're joined by Dr. Sriman Andol. He is a stroke consultant at King's College London. Alongside that, he is also an executive medical director at Manx Care. Um, Dr. Andol, thank you so much for staying with us. The next question is really around the impact of having a stroke. Many people have heard of a stroke. They will know about the FAST campaign to react as quickly as you can and call 999. But actually, how can a stroke affect your body? What are the last impacts of having a stroke right I mean so why don't uh, I'll recall what I said it's about depends on which part of the brain gets affected you'll have those symptoms and I think one of the critical things to remember is that not only the stroke affects the physical side of things which you can see where is there is a weakness of one side of the body or a droop in the face or vision which is all you can see but it also has a psychological component as well. So it will affect upon the mood and it will affect on the cognition. So it has other effects as well. And mind you, uh, this is the population that mostly the people who get affected are people who are 50 plus. And as you tend to get older, age itself is a big risk factor for stroke. As you get tend to get older, so is the risk of stroke. And so they already have some pre-existing conditions that that live with them and then on top of it you have a stroke it really puts them back so i think that is the critical one so i think so as far as you talked about disabilities and just to give you a kind of a, a feel of how it is uh, nhs spends about 2.8 billion pounds in a year looking after stroke patients across the country and that is a significant amount of um 
care that is needed for provide or a significant amount of support that is needed for patients who have suffered stroke. Now I'm talking about disabilities that can be ranging from inability to walk, talk, and you could just imagine yourself how frustrated you would be if you are unable to talk, you weren't wanting to talk, but you can't say anything. And imagine if it affected the vision, you won't, won't be able to see the aids that are needed to it. And sometimes it affects the drinking and swallowing as well, which means that you're not able to eat and drink the way you would, you would have thought you could in the past. And all happened in a, in a click of a finger. It's all done. The life changed in a matter of seconds. And that's where it starts from. So I think the demands will depend on what, how significant the more, you know, significant the damage is. Sometimes you are lucky; you will have lots of progress or recovery from where your symptoms are. Sometimes you're not so lucky; your symptoms can stay with you for a long period of time, and it may never leave you. And that will indeed, that will you know, that will in itself have other complications. That people who have had stroke will have a risk of having a further stroke. We'll also, on top of it, there are other things that can cause, you know, if you're not able to eat and drink properly, the risk of aspirations, infections, those things continue on top of it. Of course, if you can't see well, and if you're trying to walk, you have increased risk of having falls and you can't see anything properly. And if you don't exercise your body, your bones become brittle and other stuff. And if you have other conditions, that medical conditions that require more optimization, they will, it will be challenging for them to be managing those, those conditions as well. So it, it's a complex, it's a multifaceted uh, condition and it has impact on every single aspect of life and uh, both physical well-being and mental well-being. So I, on the basis of that, is there anything that we can do to prevent or give us a better chance of not even experiencing that 30 seconds that could change our lives? I think that the single, single thing that you could do in when you have a stroke is that you actually need to call the 999 and get into hospital. This is something that can be treatable. Mm -hmm. This is a condition that you can actually deal with it. And if you go, I go to the hospital, there is treatment available, which includes, you know, the clot busting drugs, thrombectomy. These days you can pull the clot out of the, uh, out of the circulation as well. So those are the critical things. But on top of it, um, yes. we've already said that, I mean, say, Things like hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol. There are there are fantastic drugs available these days in the market that can actually effectively reduce those risk factors, or at least make sure that risk factors are under control. And also, you got to do your bit about about healthy li living, which is about having taking good exercise and other other things that go with it, and of course, good exercise and healthy eating and other habits. Uh, can I ask you, is there any support for family members who uh, are taking care of someone who's mm -hmm. recovering from a stroke and uh, support for them, uh, I guess, mentally and also physically as well? I mean, what kind of help is there for the families and friends who might be helping someone? Yeah, or aiding someone? Lot, lot, I think uh, this is this is always going to be a difficult one, isn't it? I've already said that uh, there's so much of money goes into supporting people who have had stroke and a lot of care and support is there. But it is all, it is very fractured support and it is not a widely available, depends on where you, which part of the country you live in, where you live in. So there is lots of issues surrounding the support that can be provided. And I can't generalize one thing. The stroke.org.uk website is a good source of information, but you may find that not a, all areas in UK are covered by everything what we think are living in central London, for that example. So it is, it is quite a challenging thing to happen. And a lot of people have expressed uh, quite openly in the sense that when you are in the hospital or in following the six weeks or six months following recovery, you get a good support. And But then when you come home, you are just kind of haven't got anything with you not much of support is there and and your you your kind of reflection on the fact what support do the carers get it and there is a there's a lot that they have to go on their own journey of learning they have to make their own adjustments into their lifestyles mm. and how they have to adapt adapt within themselves to make sure that they they can cope and as a unit they can survive so if there is it's complex and there, there are social services, there, there are community services along with not specifically for stroke, but there are other services that can help you to get to where you need to and, and they'll see. But there is unfortunately no help is good, good enough.
And with that in mind, just finally, um, Dr. Andol, we're living in very unprecedented times. The coronavirus pandemic has changed all of our lives in many different ways. What would you say, doctor, to people that are afraid to go to the hospital, they're completely scared of contracting COVID-19, and so even if they suspect it's a possible stroke, they just do not want to call 999. What would your message be to them? Well, I think I'm just going to quote you something, and that probably is quite self-explanatory. In the time when it, when there was a COVID between March 2020 and January 2021, there were 1,413 more than expected deaths from stroke than there were not. So that itself tells you the risks of not going and seeking support and advice from the medic from the medics. That's what's going to happen. You the 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 risk is that this is life threatening. This is not about it's sprain in an ankle or a or a kind of scratch in a toe. This is a bit more than that. You will it, it is risky. You will lose life. Thank you so much for joining you, us, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Andol, and we appreciate your guidance and perspective regarding stroke. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. And thank you so much for having me as well, and hope to see you again. As Dr. Andol has just said, you have any questions, you can speak to your local GP, but more importantly, if you think you or a loved one um, is suffering a stroke, you should be calling 999 straight away. The website details, if you would like any information about conditions regarding stroke, support and help that is available for any of your loved ones or family if you've suffered a stroke, is stroke.org.uk. That's spelt S-T-R-O-K-E dot org dot UK. As ever, thank you for joining Sunny and I today. We'll see you soon. Thank you.